Hey guys, welcome back to our series on building the perfect city. Today we're going to talk about Toronto's bike share and about the difference I think a lot of people miss between urban planning and urban design. So uh, let's go. There was a time when people said that bike share would be the greatest thing to happen for a long, long time. I still remember people saying how bike share would make us proud that our city was a bike friendly city. And that people living downtown would sign up for bike share in huge numbers. And that bike share would truly become an integral part of our public transportation system. Some people blame the mayor. Actually, most people blame the mayor. The dream was that the streets of Toronto would be flooded with people on bike share, just as what happened in Montreal and New York. But I really want to see with my own eyes an example of bike share done right. When I got to New York, the first thing I did was sign up for a 24 hour bike share membership. Because it was my first time in New York and I wanted to really see the city. And I knew the only way I was going to do that was on a bike. And I was right, because in New York, bike share truly was everywhere. And anywhere I wanted to go, it was there for me sitting right in the middle of the street. And this is the difference between urban planning and urban design. You see, Toronto's bike share is beautifully planned. Planning is about looking at how people move around the city. And Toronto's bike share plan is almost as good as New York's. Yet, New York's bike share is adored and admired around the world. At this point, your heart rate should be elevated. This is all about core tightness. And one, and two. While Toronto's is not. And that dream of a bike share city is far, far away. The problem
problem with Toronto's bike share is the urban design. I think that urban design is just as important and probably more important than urban planning. When I got back from New York, I thought about who would be the ideal bike share user. This is where I live. And here is where I work. This is where I work out. And this is where I play tennis. And every time I go somewhere, I just hop on a bike share that's a minute away from my house. And I know so many people who would be ideal bike share users, just like me. But as you can see, Toronto is still desperately trying to get people to sign up. Rule number one when deciding where to place bike share stations, you need to be consistent. In New York, if you go to any major intersection or any subway station, Toronto has hands down the world's most inconsistent bike share. A few of the stations are right where you expect them to be. And you'd expect the same for all the other subway stations. But almost all of the time, the stations are located in places that you'd least expect. Every week, someone asks me what I think about Toronto's bike share. In New York, bike share is a private business. They can't afford to make mistakes. Toronto's bike share is a disaster. Even if it's just 12 cents a day, I started to tell people, you get what you pay for. This is the station that's down the street from my house. Chinatown is probably Toronto's most popular place for grocery shopping. Yet, Chris has to walk two blocks just to get there. But to be fair, the other two closest stations are even bigger disasters. Most importantly, design is in the details. When it comes to urban design, you really have to sweat the small stuff. And more often than not, it's local residents, not the planners, who are the experts. <laughs> Toronto is a city with so much potential. The transit infrastructure is pretty great. And the bicycle infrastructure is popping up left and right. But when we start to treat bike share as a part of the transit network, that's when we will finally have something to be proud about.